Hi guys, Vincent here. Um, well, here we are at the end of E3, so um, of course, like anybody else out there, I'm going to be doing a quick wrap-up, but uh, I'm sure you guys aren't going to want to hear about what I thought of every single game or rate each conference, so I'm more going to do the experience of E3 and you know how it affects us, how we, inter how we receive the information and stuff like that. So... Starting on that thread, the first big thing I want to talk about is the way it was covered on TV this year. Now, uh, in the beginning, when I first got into E3, like maybe seven, eight years ago, uh, I didn't have G4 or stuff like that. Um, so I literally had to go read every single article, find it, take an hour and a half to find them, then spend another hour and a half reading them. Um, but then I moved, and I did get the channel, and to just sit there and have it all flow into you it's kind of just it makes it so much easier you don't have to worry about oh god what I'm, what information am i missing and you can kind of just sit there and enjoy it um however i moved and this was the first year i was going to have no g4 for e3 and i started to worry but then it, i don't know if they had it too this year but i definitely know spike did i know uh uh that mtv2 also had the nintendo conference and basically what I'm just trying to say with all of this is I think more channels need to get it. I don't think this needs to be like a uh, Madden license or something like that where people have to fight and argue over, you know, who gets the rights to it. I think it should just be something that's, it should be on as many channels as possible, as many websites, all the things. So everybody can enjoy it. That way, you know, is one of the things, because uh, it will allow people to step in the game, you know, go, what? how would their coverage be special instead of just saying we have the world exclusive and then they just slouch about letting the exclusive do itself so uh i really do hope more channels get it next year more people can enjoy it you know that you don't need a laptop you can just sit down and watch all the news um of course i have to talk about the conferences even though i just said i wasn't going to uh but i'll keep it very brief to the things that stood out to me on each so the main thing for Xbox, really, it, it was fairly weak. The only thing that stood out for me was the glass box or the glass software, whatever, the tablet thing. Um, and it's one of those things, let's be honest, it's a blatant we rip off. But it, it, because it's optional, it allows people to make games that they want to. It's not really there. Although we are kind of, it feels a little imposed, because as you saw with Halo, uh... It's just a freaking information screen. Uh, I'm sure somebody will m make good use of it, but right now it feels just like a rip-off. Uh, with a cool rip-off, but a rip-off nonetheless. Um, briefly talking about Sony, theirs was good, and I am extremely disappointed they didn't announce anything new, because I thought they were. Um, but it's one of those things, they did reassure me of all these games. It's one of those things... I knew I was probably going to get the God of War game, and I knew I was probably going to get The Last of Us, because Naughty Dog made it, but these were, you know, the first time we got to see them, these were the first times that they showed us, okay, here's why you want them, you know, so they kind of just reassured me, okay, I do want all these games, you know, even though I was aware of them, now I really do want them. Um, that, and I want to briefly mention the crossplay. Uh, I think, I'm just glad that people are using it more because I'm really upset not a lot of people used it on the PSP. I know it was a much harder to, but uh, Lair tried it, you know, I'm sure a few other games did. I'm just glad more people and bigger titles are using it because I think that's just such a cool feature. Um, I, I hope they really do keep with it and it's just gonna, not going to be these first few ones. And finally, ending with Nintendo, um, yeah, again, just like Sony's it kind of reassured me, look, the Wii U can make video games, you know, developers can adapt to the Wii U, but beyond that, there was nothing like, oh, wow, like, I want this console, it was just, oh, so that's how Batman's going to work on the Wii U, or how, that's how a zombie game's going to work, um, so it was nothing bad, it was a very weak, just very reassuring, so, of course, just to upset fanboys, I'm going to have to say Sony had the best, because they upset me the least, all disappointed me, but Sony's disappointed me the least, because at least Sony's, I walked away with, like, yeah, I want these games. Meanwhile, Microsoft was like, meh. And Wii was like, okay, I understand now. Now, 
I don't know about many other people, but me personally, uh, a big part of E3 has to be PlayStation Home. Now, I know a lot of you are sitting there typing, oh, home is sucks, it's for it's a Second Life clone, people just for losers who don't understand PlayStation. Um, I will save that for another day. But I do like their commitment to E3. That, uh, you know, when they first started doing E3 at home, it, it's unlike to anything else. I really think the other guys should try and find a way to do it. But the fact that you can just walk around the virtual booth, uh, you know, and see, at least look at the floor, how it's set out, and look at other people running around, like, you know, it's unlike anything else. And it's one of those things... For people who can't go there, to it's as close as we're gonna get. So it's almost like a you know, a artificial thing, but it's still very good. It's it's unlike any uh, thing, and I do enjoy that they're stepping it up this year. That past years it was like oh you know go to our uh, virtual E3 and you'll get a PlayStation table and you know ver PlayStation clothes. This year it's like go to the Sly booth and you'll get a Sly mask. Go to the Killzone booth and you'll get you know a Killzone mask. Stuff like that. Stuff that you want. Stuff that, uh, you know, symbolizes the series, not just E3. Um, but yeah, I and I hope m more people do this, because just to walk around, it's unlike anything else. Um, but of course, E3 isn't just about games, because uh, Square Enix just released this new tech demo for Final Fantasy. And, uh, it's one of the things just, I want to briefly talk about it because it's one of the things it's good it looks amazing I'm not trying to insult it at all but that being said um, it does confirm a worry of mine that the jump to PS4 to 3 or 720 to 360 whatever you want to say next gen is not going to be like that mind blow it's not going to be like whoa how are we doing that it's going to be the evolution is going to be more subtle so it's not going to be like a huge leap but more subtle tweaks like light in and facial pores, you know, hair, stuff like that, um, which I do admire, I do like, but it does just make me go like, oh, I think this is kind of the, we've hit the peak for, oh man, how did they do that graphics and just like, oh, okay, you know, like, oh, you made the, you know, the whisker physics or, you know, the beard or the skin, okay, you made it more real, okay, that's cool, because it does look good, but it's just, it still looks only a slight up above of current. It's one of those things like uh, I don't have a problem with it, but it just makes me sad because we won't ever have that again, to my knowledge. But of course, E3 ultimately is about the games, so I have to talk about the games in some capacity. So I'm just going to do the quick my favorite four from the conference. Um, so the first one I've got to talk about, of course, is Watchdog. Yeah, I know. Everybody else loves Watchdog. I do too. Um, for obvious reason, it looks amazing. Uh, it's an interesting concept, uh, very relevant to our times as well. And uh, it's just, the game and possibilities are fun. It's one of those things that you're able to mess around in a GTA setting without being feeling cartoony. It's one of those things as realistic as number four and number five, which it's probably going to be, you still walk around with a bazooka shooting people, throwing grenades, just going batshit crazy. Um, this one is more toned down. You get to cause destruction, but still feel realistic. You get to cause pileups. You get to shut down cell phones. You get to see, you get to mess with people, but still in a realistic sense. And that is something I'm looking forward to. Um, now this, I, I didn't know what to pick. So basically, I'm just going to say, Anything shown at the Sony press conference because uh, it's one of those things. God of War, it plays just as it does. Uh, it looks amazing. It's like wow, like that almost looks you know photo real. It looks so good. Um, the Last of Us is one of those things. It's very dark, very uh, good atmosphere. You know, very interactive. Uh, it's one of those things. So anything shown there, I just love. Uh, they all, I want. I pretty much want all of them. Uh, another one, of course, going back to Ubisoft again, is uh, Assassin's Creed Three, because of course, I love pirates. I love the open sea, the you know, Lost Frontiers and stuff like that. So the fact that you get to sail a boat and stuff like that, and you get to go in naval battles, I just think that's that's so amazing, and that's really something I'm. Uh, 
looking forward to. That's one of the favorite features so far. And finally, Splinter Cell with Kinect. Um, on its own, it looks pretty good, same as always, but the thing that steps it up for me is the voice integration with Kinect. The fact that you can scream at an enemy and they'll look at you, and it's just... It's one of those things, that's how I think you need to do voice-controlled games. Um, you know, like, I, ha I haven't played Mass Effect, I'm only aware of uh, the fact that you can choose what response you can with Kinect. I don't know if you can order, you know, tell them, run over here, but irregardless, I think Splinter Cell still does anything far better than whatever Mass Effect did with Kinect. And I think more games need to be like that, where it's not the central focus, it's just a little something, a little extra tool in your arsenal, but it's not the main focus. And, yeah, that's it. Uh, overall, this was a fairly weak year, but, uh, you know, it wasn't good, it wasn't bad, it just kind of in the middle, it just... It wasn't to show us the future, it was kind of just to reassure us the past is, you know, the present is still good. Don't worry about the future right now, because we still have to enjoy the present. So, in that regard, I can't complain. And, uh, yeah. That's my thoughts, and I'll, uh, see you guys later.